everyone. Welcome in. My name is Maggie Umberger, and I'm a mindful movement specialist dedicated to helping you feel good, build strength, and unlock your potential. Today, we're talking about the sun salutations in a vinyasa yoga practice, or Surya Namaskar. If this is your first time hearing these words, awesome. We're going to break down these like 12 or so postures and the transitions that make this one set sequence talk about how it fits into a vinyasa practice and the purpose of them, but also ask some questions to get curious about, are they right for you? Do they need to be performed all the time? And what are some other options that you have at your disposal and in your toolkit to use whenever you need to so that you can still practice a vinyasa yoga sequence and be in a class and feel connected to the class and still make it work for you. So Surya Namaskar or Sun salutations are performed at the beginning of a yoga practice traditionally after a little bit of breath work and integration. They are a series of many different postures put together into a series, into one sequence that really can be a practice all by itself. There is a lot of benefit in repetition just for the nervous system to know where it's moving next, to know where the body is moving next, and to really get into the rhythm of connecting to breath and building a lot of heat with breath. Some of you may already know this, but in yoga we tend to practice breathing into and out of the nose, nasal breathing often in ujjayi breathing context, which is this slight restriction, constriction at the back of the throat, kind of sounds like an ocean wave. And with that use of inhaling, exhaling through the nose, connecting to the core, the lower abdominals and that low belly lock, Uddiyana Bandha, um, that is a way that we can start to build a lot of heat and create that fire of prana or breath and life force through the body that then can be carried out through the rest of a yoga practice. It tends to be the point at which I start to sweat. And so for those reasons, it can be really nice to sort of integrate into a movement practice. You're moving in a lot of different ways. You're getting extension and flexion of the spine. You're stretching your posterior chain. You're opening up through the chest. You're creating some mobility for the shoulders and downward facing dog. So there's a lot that is in this sequence. And we'll go ahead and break it down before we pull back and really ask those questions of, is it right for you? And is it right for you all the time? Sun salutations traditionally start at the top of the mat. Arms can be beside you. Some folks start with hands at heart center. It's a reach overhead on the inhale. It's a fold forward on the exhale. A halfway lift on the inhale. Hands support you somewhere. Some people will have their hands on the ground, but not always. Hands will plant on the ground and you'll step back into a low push-up. Chaturanga is the exhale, so it's one breath out there. Upward facing dog is the inhale and then rolling over the toes to get back to downward facing dog on the exhale. Typically you spend a few breaths, then you lift your heels and bend your knees, get empty of the stale air and travel to the top of the mat. On an inhale, it's a halfway lift, a fold on the exhale, a rise all the way up to stand, arms overhead, and hands back to heart center or arms beside you on the exhale. That's a really quick description of all of the, the movements of a sun salutation. I typically over cue all the alignment things because there's so much that goes into this sequence. But ultimately, breath to movement, that's what happens on the inhale and on the exhale as you're moving through a sun salutation or Surya Namaskar. If you've ever had an injury and you've said, yoga is the one thing that aggravates my injury, I have heard a lot of clients tell me that, and that was my story for a long time. Moving quickly through a sun salutation, like what we just did, without thinking about those subtle alignment cues, and doing so at the beginning of a yoga class where maybe you're not super warm yet, can be the thing that just triggers some pain in the body. And we are all different, so all of us will need to pay attention to different things, but I wanna call out a few key places where we wanna just be really mindful if we're even going through a full sun salutation. And then I'm gonna give you some other options just so that you can stay with the class if that's something that you wanna do, but this whole movement sequence isn't really fitting for you. And, I, and I'll just say it 
for a long time did not fit for me. So it's nothing to say that you are not good at yoga, that you can't practice yoga if you don't like this sequence. It's just about finding what fits for us and our unique bodies at that moment in time. So the first portion that I really like to pay attention to is in the forward fold, not locking out the knees because yes, we're stretching the hamstrings, but if you've ever taken a class with me or if you've been in one of my workshops, you know that we stretch our hamstrings all the time in yoga. So we don't have to do it all the time, all the time. By bending your knees, you give your low back a little more support as you get into your forward fold and our upper neck and shoulders are gonna give the cues to our lower back for what to do in the segments of the spine. So if when you bend your knees, you can then let your head go, it's going to tell your low back to release as well. So I love that cue to just make sure I'm not holding tension in my neck and shoulders even when I'm trying to fold. From there, the halfway lift, same idea, we're still keeping a little bend of the knees. I like to think about, and you can watch the video I talk about building strength to inform the yoga practice. I really like to think about core pushing through my feet like I'm about to do a deadlift when I come into a halfway lift. So I can feel my glutes supporting me, my hamstrings supporting me, my core, and not my low back. That's the halfway lift. And then if you're stepping back to a low plank or jumping to a low plank, we are still being super mindful of how this is a total body exercise. So yes, it's shoulders, but it's core, it's glutes, it's legs, it's everything on the breath out. Up dog, I'm still thinking about the strength that I'm pushing into my hands. I'm thinking about the abs turning on, so I'm not making this as big of a back bend as I possibly can by dropping into the low back dropping my head back. I really want to think about supporting my spine. So I push into my hands. I push into the tops of my feet and I picture pubic bone up to belly button getting really connected to find the back bend. And we can talk about upward facing dog for a lot longer, but not today. From up dog, it's down dog, which would be pushing into your hands, using your core to roll over your toes to get back to downward facing dog. And then as you come to the top of your mat, being mindful not to lock out your knees in your halfway lift, in your fold, and when you stand all the way up, only at the very top do your legs straighten without ever locking out, and then coming back to your reset. Within that, breaking it down even further, if any part of that is not feeling super supportive to you, I want to give you some options as additional ways that you might be able to practice these sun salutations, still be with the group and make it work for you. The first thing you can do is just move a little bit slower. So as you're folding forward, you take your time to take your halfway lift. And that doesn't mean that you have to go with the rest of the group on that. Maybe you pause for a full breath. Maybe you step back to plank and reset by putting your knees on the ground to do your version of that chaturanga push-up with your knees on the ground and coming to your belly, finding a cobra instead of an up dog and coming through tabletop to get to down dog. You can also, from up dog, if you're comfortable there but not rolling over toes, keep your core connected but come to your knees, re-engage your core even more, then tuck your toes and come to down dog. All of this, when you come to the top of your mat, can be done slower as well. Halfway lift, maybe you don't fold again. Maybe you stay in your halfway lift, put your hands on your hips, stand up with the rest of the group, reach your arms overhead if that feels right, and reset. If you wanna take a different route from that forward fold, from your halfway lift, instead of coming to a chaturanga or a low push-up, Lunge one leg backwards, put your knee on the ground, reach your arms up, you're still getting extension for your spine, hands to the ground, meet everyone in down dog. The only thing you have to remember there is if you did that with one leg on one side, do it with the other leg on the second side. Now, if you know me or you've been in my classes, you know how hard it is for me to only talk about something for just a short period of time. So this is a really quick snapshot of some different routes that you can take. And if the goal of a sun salutation of Surya Namaskar is to settle into your practice, into your breath, build that familiarity and that sense of ease for your nervous system as you're building heat and 
settling deeper into a yoga practice, but you're fighting your body, fighting your breath to make every single one of those postures happen, it can have the reverse effect on your nervous system. So take a moment to check in, feel out where those places are where I like to say like the lights go off or it just doesn't feel very connected. When you move slower and you can figure out what it is that you need for your body, you can start to turn those lights on again and create the path forward that feels best for you. If you've already joined my membership, you've probably tried some classes where we have lots of different types of transitions, not always moving through a chaturanga, an upward facing dog to a downward facing dog. So if you haven't, try it out, give it a shot, and then just see if there's some classes in there that feel more at ease for your nervous system. And then you can use those tools as you move through the rest of your own practices or you go out to your favorite yoga studio at home that you can still stay with the class and still practice while making each movement something that feels really good for you and additive to your yoga practice. If you haven't yet already, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter where I offer lots more movement tips like this one, as well as full-length classes through my membership. I'll see you on the mat soon.